All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing a, a very different coloring technique. Um, I don't know if you follow me on Twitter. You may have seen the um, conversation on Twitter with uh, Tamara Bonvillain. We got to talking about layers, and uh, sh she has a very uh, unique uh, coloring style uh, that's a very technical uh, and, and uh, uses a lot of uh, Photoshop mask and, and some of the more techie parts of Photoshop that I dabble in, <laughs> basically. Uh, so, um, But it's a, it's a very interesting technique. It has some uh, advantages, I think, and I want to talk about it. It's not something that I uh, use a lot in my work, but I have found situations where I found it helpful. So I wanted to go over this today, and if you're if you've been watching my channel for a while, uh, you're going to find this very different and possibly quite confusing uh, because it took me a little while to sort of wrap my head around this. So but anyway, I will do my best. Uh, if you enjoy these lessons, by the way, on YouTube, be sure to check the link below. I have a, a full length coloring course down there. Uh, there's a 10% discount uh, in the link in the description. But so before I get into how this method works, I need to talk about mask. Now I've talked about Photoshop mask before uh, briefly. I'm going to go over that again for those of you that aren't familiar with how a mask or an adjustment layer works in Photoshop. So um, I've got this just gray uh, background, really nothing on it at all. I'm going to go down to my um, uh, adjustment layer button, which is a little half circle in uh, Photoshop CC and some of the previous ones too, I think. And you get all these different ways that you can um, affect the layers below it uh, with contrast levels, all these sorts of things. But there's a solid color option. And I'm going to pick that. And you can see that it's, it's put this color on top of my other color. And I'm just going to change this to something uh, different just so we we'll get kind of a yellow here. And you can see it automatically creates a mask. Now, right now, there's nothing that is masked off. It's, it's, the whole mask is white, so the entire layer is being shown. If I fill this mask with black, and it covers up, it masks off all the yellow, and the way that the masks work is I can go to the mask, not the, the, the color, but go to the mask, and I'm just going to get pure white for now and pick a, a brush. And as I paint white, it's pulling that, that yellow through. Uh, so I can actually see um, this yellow color by just painting with white. And then if I switch to black, then I can paint that away. And, and obviously, there's and all the brushes work the same way with this. I'm, I'm just using white and black and tones of gray in between instead of using the actual color. So that's kind of how a, a mask works, is you paint with white and mask the color with, with black, okay? Now what that allows you to do is, from a, from a coloring standpoint, is it allows you to change the rendering color of your light source without having to re-render anything, okay? So I can go to my solid color layer, just double click that, well, and I can change this now to any other color, and you can see that it's you know all my rendering is is changing. Okay, the other thing that lets me do is I can go to my let's say this is flat a flat color underneath, um, and I can change that to a different color, and again all of my rendering stays in place. So if I launched you anywhere uh, in, in that part, go back and watch it a couple times. But uh, but you can layer as many of these as you want. So like I can make a new solid color adjustment layer, and we'll make this one uh, red just so you can have something different. And I'm going to fill it with black. You can see it all went away. So now I can go back to my mask and paint with white. You can see that red coming through. And again, I can go down to black and, and erase with black, basically. So it's a, it's a non-destructive way of rendering. And I've actually been doing this on a couple of pages for Postal. I'm working on uh, Postal number 14 right now. And just to kind of give you guys an example of how this works in uh, reality here um, on an actual page, I'm going to go back to this one that I've, I've started working on already and just put these side by side. 
let's see, let's do this. So you can see in my layers now down here, I've got uh, solid color layers. I've got this orange, yellow, green, and blue. These are all uh, layers that I'm painting with, basically. And I have the orange and the yellow set to hard light. Um, so, the, I mean, the mode is set to hard light uh, instead of normal, and you can use whatever mode you normally color in. Um, it's fine. Normal, screen, hard light, any combination of any of those. There's really no right answer there. And I've got um, a color layer. This is kind of an adjustment layer like I usually do, um, would normally do. And I have some levels adjustment in here and different things. But um, so all I did, I set my base colors. Let me turn all these off. So you can see my base colors here. And I just duplicated those over here basically uh, so that my base colors are the same. Now, all I have to do for example, I'm going to grab the sky. I'm just going to hide the selection. Now I can go to my uh, orange uh, hard light layer and get, pick any brush. I'm just going to pick a nice simple brush here. And if I, again, I'm not painting with the color. I'm painting with shades of gray. So I'm just going to go to the white here. But you can see that I'm, it's not painting with white. That, that yellow in the layer is actually coming through here, that orangey color uh, that's here. So now I didn't have to pick orange, and um, I can keep that same color when I move in and start working on faces. Again, I can jump down to my flats, grab the, grab the face, go back to my orange layer, And now you can see I can paint with that same orange without having to actually worry about picking that orange color. And I can jump to my yellow if I want to add something else in here just to make it, uh, you know, to add, make it different. So, so uh, as far as uh, Tamra's methods go uh, on this, again, I have barely wrapped my head around how all of this works. Hers, she nests layers within groups and there's a lot there's more complicated stuff going on but that's the fisher price version basically of, of of what she's doing and just to give you guys an example of what i mean when i say this is uh simplified okay you guys are gonna love this so i took a screenshot of one of Tamara's uh, layer windows uh, she actually posted this on twitter by the way if you're not following colorist on twitter you should. Um, the vast majority of it is total silliness that um, won't do you any good uh, <laughs> as from an industry standpoint or an educational standpoint. But every now and then there's some really cool and funny stuff that gets posted. So um, I'll post some links to some of their Twitters down here. You can even read that whole conversation. But this is an example of one of Tamara's uh, wayward pages, I believe it was. Just to give you an example. So some of these, you can see all of the different uh, each light source, basically each colored light gets its own layer and you can see these are nested within groups for different characters I'm assuming and different things like that so um, it's, a, it's a very very different method um, than I usually work but it does have its um, like I said it def definitely has some uh, positives uh, to especially with editing you know if if I want to make the sky color uh, green or this highlight color green then there it is it's all green um, uh, just by double clicking that base color and changing that here you know so there's um, it, like I said it, it definitely has its its uses um, I haven't adopted it uh, yet and I don't I don't think I ever will adopt it completely but especially for pages that really have strong light sources uh, that are just a couple of colors like like these are I do like it. It does tend to go pretty quick because you don't have to think about picking colors um, and you can easily change the base colors underneath. So if I want his jacket to be, uh, well, not that, let's see, if I want his jacket to be uh, blue instead of this, um, you know, whatever that is, then I can go in here and, uh, you know, play around. It's heavily affected by a lot of different colors right now. So uh, probably not the best example, but but I can go in and affect those things underneath and uh, it makes you know editing and changes and those sort of things a little bit easier. So 
So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video today. Um, if you did, uh, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And again, if you enjoy this sort of thing, I've got about 100 videos on YouTube and a coloring course. Uh, there's a link in the bottom with about 10 hours of, of coloring tutorials, so there's plenty to watch there. Thanks again for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.